in this video, we're going to look at the SUVAT equations. So we're going to introduce the five variables that are involved in the SUVAT equations. That's S, U, V, A, and T. They're the variables, hence the name. And then we're going to look at a few examples of SUVAT equations. Now, the SUVAT equations are equations we use when trying to solve problems that involve a body in motion. So they come up a lot in mechanics and kinematics. So it's when we have real world problems where we say somebody, a car, a person, a projectile is moving and we want to know certain things about it. How long does it take to move a certain distance or how long does it take to get up to a certain velocity, say, or things like this, or what velocity will have reached after a certain amount of time if we know its acceleration. So it's these kind of problems that you might have maybe you've already seen, maybe you've come across in your notes on whatever modular class you're taking. But yeah, we use the SUVAT equations. They're very useful when considering these kind of problems. So let's start this video by just looking at these five variables, S, U, V, A, and T. So what are they? So S is displacement. U is initial velocity. V is final velocity. A is acceleration. And T is time. So we may be given the problem that, uh, say, a car starts accelerating from rest at 5 meters per second per second. So that's its acceleration. It started from rest, so its initial velocity in this problem is zero. And we might be asked, what is its velocity after 10 seconds? So we know its initial velocity, its acceleration. We know that the time in this problem is 10 seconds. And we know what we're trying to find out is final velocity. So that's always the case in problems like this, that you'll be given in the setup of the problem some of these five variables. And your task will be to deduce one of the other ones or all of the other ones, something like that. So the example I gave is quite a simple one, but there's lots of different problems involving bodies in motion. And so the SUVAT equations allow you to do this. So we'll see how the SUVAT equations link these values together in various different ways. Now, let's just look in a bit more detail at displacement, because this is the one that I think confuses people the most. So the other things, velocity and acceleration and time, are hopefully quite common ideas. We understand what we mean by these things. But what do we mean by displacement? Displacement is a vector from start position to end position. So in whatever problem we're considering, it's the vector that goes from the position the object started in to the position it ended in. Which means displacement is not the same as distance. This is the thing that often confuses people. So let's look at an example of this. Say we have a running track. So this is a bird's eye view of a running track. And we have a runner on the start line represented by this red dot and they move to this position here, represented by this red, the second red dot. And they follow this curve, this uh, red curve. So they run from the start line to this second dot along this red curve. Then the distance they've traveled is just the length of the red curve. So whatever the length of this curve is, that is their distance. But their displacement is this vector here. So it's not just some single positive number representing their distance, it's a vector. And it's the vector that goes along the path from where they started to where they finished in a straight line. So it's quite different to their distance. The vector will have a length, but in this case, the length of the vector isn't the same as the distance they traveled because they didn't travel from their start point to their end point in a straight line. They took a curved path. So this vector is their displacement. We could look at one more example. Say they start on the start line and they run all the way around the track and get back to where they started. Then again, their distance is the length of this red curve, this sort of oval shape. But their displacement would just be the zero vector. It's just zero because they started and ended in the same position. So in fact, these four variables here are all vectors and only time is a scalar because these first four variables have a direction. So we talk about displacement 
in a specific direction relative to our origin. So we define some origin in the problem. Usually it's where the body starts. That obviously makes sense, hence the name origin. And then displacement is defined relative to this. And so is velocity. They could be moving in a sort of positive direction or in the negative direction. And the same for acceleration. Now, the reason this confuses some people is because we talk about these being vectors, we introduce them as vectors, and then in the first problems we see, we'll only be considering movement in one dimension. And in this case, we don't actually write these vectors as column vectors, we can just write them as single numbers because they're just one dimensional. But they're still vectors because they still have a direction. So let's just see an example to see what we mean. So let's say that we have something starting here on this black dot here and say this line is the ground so say it's a person starting in this position and they walk along the ground to this position and let's say that's 10 units in length or whatever it is it could be 10 meters 10 miles doesn't matter but it's 10 so their distance traveled is 10. now in order to define their displacement if we want to define it as an actual like column vector we would have to define a set of axes and an origin so let's say that this is our y-axis and the ground is our x-axis and the origin is here where the person started and then their displacement is this vector here now where we'll define the end position as being 10 units along the x-axis so with this setup their displacement is a column vector and it is 10 0 but really, we could just think about it, since it's just one dimensional, we haven't actually got any movement in the y direction because they're just moving in a straight line. If they moved in some curved path, we would have to consider them moving in two dimensions, but we're just considering them moving in one dimension. So we could just think of their displacement here as 10, same as their distance. But the reason it's a vector is because if, say, a second person moved in the opposite direction so they started at the origin but they started walking in the complete opposite direction so along the negative x-axis then their distance traveled say they also go 10 units their distance is still just 10 but their displacement would now be minus 10 or as a column vector minus 10 0 because they moved in the negative direction and this is the same for velocity and acceleration if something was moving in the minus direction it would have a negative velocity so that is why these things, these first four variables in the SUVA equations, S, U, V, and A, are always vectors. And only time is a scalar, because you can't move backwards in time. So let's now look at some examples of SUVA equations. So one example is V equals U plus A, T. So this links four of the variables together, tells us that the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity, plus the acceleration of the object times the amount of time that has elapsed. So you would calculate final velocity at a given time. And it would be the initial velocity plus the body's acceleration multiplied by that time. Another pseudo equation is S equals UT plus a half AT squared. So this one involves displacement and then initial velocity, time and acceleration. And another one is that V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS. So this involves U, V and A, like the first equation, but now instead of T, it has S. So these equations could be used to find certain variables given other variables. So if you had U, A and T, you could find V with the first one. If you had V, A and S, you could find U with the third one. You'd have to rearrange a bit to make U the subject. But uh, you could do it. And if you Google SUVA equations, you'll find tables of all the equations and they'll be rearranged in every combination to make each different variable the subject. So that can be uh, that's a very useful thing to do to look at. So in uh, the next few videos, we'll look at a few examples of questions that involve using these equations. Running silver through the night. Happy.